Here's a short video to show you some of the new DevTool features that are available in Spring Boot 1.3. I've got a small demo application here. It's just got one main method, one controller that sets up some information in a model, one CSS file, and one HTML page. This is rendered using Timeleaf. If I start this application, and then head over to the browser and refresh it, you'll see we get a very simple page. If you've ever used Lattice, you may recognize this kind of uh, style of application. This is one of the demo apps that ships with Lattice. I've just copied it to, to Spring. So with Spring Boot 1.2, um, if you wanted to actually make changes to this application while it was running, things were a little bit hit and miss. So for instance, if I wanted to change the CSS, um, maybe I'll change the font size so it's a bit smaller, then that works. But if I want to change the time leaf template, by default, uh, that won't work. So if I change maybe this, just drop the is, refresh the browser, but the text here doesn't update. This is because time leaf is actually caching the uh, result of this template parsing, so that it doesn't have to do it every time. And there's a property that you can set to change this, but it's a bit awkward to have to remember to do it. When it comes to actually changing your Java code, you're normally out of luck entirely unless you're running in debug mode and just changing a single method. So with Spring Boot 1.3, there's a new module that you can add to your POM file. So if you add the Spring Boot DevTools module and then restart your application, you should find that it behaves slightly differently. So once again, I head over and refresh the page. This time, if I change the uh, the font size in the CSS, that continues to work as before. But I can also now change the template. Undo that. And I can also this time change the code. So for instance, let's add something different in the amount of uptime. What you'll notice here is that the Spring application has actually detected that the class files have changed beneath it and it's restarted itself. So if I now refresh the browser, I get that different message. Notice as well that the restart time is a lot quicker than the initial startup time. This is because everything's already loaded into the JVM, so we can just throw away classes that have changed but keep the majority of the application um, already hot, so it's, uh, it's much faster to start up. This is quite nice, but clicking on this refresh button can get a bit tedious after a while. So with Spring Boot 1.3, we also include a live reload server. This means you can get a plug-in for your browser. Um, I've got, got one installed here for Firefox. If I click this, this plug-in will actually attach to my local machine. Then the next time that I make a change and save the file, I no longer have to refresh the browser, it automatically does it for me. And this works with CSS files as well as Java files. So if I make that font smaller again, it refreshes. If I undo that and save the file again, things go back to usual. So this makes the local development experience a bit nicer. But we've also done some extra stuff to make the remote development experience nicer as well. So I've taken this application and I've actually packaged it up as a Docker um, image and then published it to Lattice as a, a pushed application running on my local machine. So here's the app running within Lattice, within my Docker um, environment, within a local VM. So one of the problems with running apps within Docker containers or with pushing them to the cloud is that it can sometimes be hard to actually attach a remote debugger to them. So with 1.3 we've decided to add a, an additional feature where we can tunnel debug traffic through HTTP. So to enable this you've got to do a couple of things, it's not on by default. 
you've got to add a property to your application properties uh, spring.devtools remote secrets this is just a password that's used to authenticate the connection and then in the case of docker you've got to add the additional arguments to actually start the JVM uh, with debug mode so if you look at my docker file if you uh, go to the spring guide on this you'll see that mine's got some additional things I've got xdebug and I've got some configuration settings to say start as a server uh, and don't suspend the application I don't actually need to specify the port this starts up on because Java will pick one and Spring Boot's able to actually infer that. So with this application running I can now um, actually connect my local development environment to that remote application and do some remote debugging. So to do that what you do is you have an additional run configuration. So you create a run configuration that points to your project as it usually would but rather than running your main method, you run a new main method that's part of Spring Boot. So in this case I'm running Remote Spring Application. I then also need to provide a single argument. This is the URL of the endpoint that it's actually going to hit. So in this case you can see it's the same URL as I've got up in my browser. So if I run this application now, you can see it starts up fairly quickly and it's actually established a connection through into my, my uh, docker image inside Lattice. If I want to actually attach now the remote debugger I can connect to my local machine, my local application here, this one that's running, and this will tunnel debug traffic through via HTTP to talk to Lattice. So here I've got the remote debug set up. If I connect you can see that I'm talking to a, an open JDK machine and if I refresh this browser over here I'm going to hit a breakpoint uh, that I've set up locally and you can see all the the kind of regular debug stuff that you'd uh, that you'd normally um, that you normally get one thing to note is that this can be quite slow tunneling remote debug traffic which is quite chatty over HTTP is not particularly fast so whilst it works quite well on my Lattice machine, if I actually had this out on uh, on the real internet, it would be a little bit more painful to use. But it's still um, a potentially kind of useful technique. I'll just let that run through. The final thing I want to show you is how we can use the same um, restart techniques on a remote application. So I'm going to take this application that I've got here and I'm going to rebuild it. and then I'm going to push it up to Cloud Foundry. So the push process takes a little while because it's going to grab a JVM, build up a uh, an image file, publish it, start the application running. Um, so this, this kind of cycle can get a little bit irritating if you're working on something and you just want to make small changes. So we'll just give that a minute or two to upload. And there we go. If I head over to the browser, you can see my application is running and it's been up for 26 seconds. So now if I want to actually attach to that one, I can do the same kind of technique as I did before. I've got uh, another configuration here. And this time I, it's exactly the same, but I'm pointing to the, uh, the Cloud Foundry endpoint. So if I run that, what's happening now is this application is connected to Cloud Foundry, but it's still monitoring my local class path. So if I want to make changes now here, so for instance if I change the font size again, 
Spring Boot is able to detect that change, but this time, rather than updating the local application, it will push it through to uh, the remote endpoint and then update itself dynamically there and then refresh. Now, if I refresh the browser, you can see it's updated. And we actually have the live reload server still running locally as well, so if I switch that on and change it back, you can see it pushes the changes up and then triggers the live reload. So this is actually updating a remote service on the internet but refreshing my browser for me. And this works with uh, with restarts as well, so I can change, uh, for instance, I can change the uptime again. If I save that application, it's going to re recompile it, notice the change, push up the one class file that's changed, and then trigger a restart on Cloud Foundry. Thanks for watching.